Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another video for Infinite Lagrange, and indeed the first one for 2022. So, Happy New Year to you all, I hope you had a fantastic holiday period. I was up at a Masuna fishing camp with the family, had a great time up there, nice and relaxing, good to get away from things. But hey, we're back sailing into 2022 now, and I'm back with new and exciting content. Today's video is another one of the Blueprint Breakdown series where we go over the different blueprints in Infinite Lagrange and talk about all the different variations of them. This video is also sponsored by NetEase and if you're concerned as to what that means in regards to the impartiality of my content then please check through to my Discord, I've linked it in the description down below and I've put a public statement out there. It's also a really interesting place to get to talk to people if you want to talk about Infinite Lagrange and other mobile games, great place to hang out and have a chat with folks. Anyway, with all of that that said and done then, let's jump into today's blueprint breakdown where we're going to be talking about the Antonius Consortium Reliat. This is absolutely one of my favourite ships in the game, if not my favourite ship, and all three of its variations are absolutely excellent ships. Now, the first one we're going to be covering, of course, is the Reliat Rapid Torpedo Frigate. We will then look at the Torpedo Type and then the Stealth Type afterwards. If you want to check out a particular one of those, check the timestamps in the description down below to jump between those. So, to unlock the Reliat, this is actually a surprisingly easy ship to get. Early on in your career in Infinite Lagrange, in the store you will find a box that has some dedicated blueprints in it. You're guaranteed to get a blueprint of something. Um, some of the early ones include the uh, Winged Hussar and, indeed, the Reliat. Well worth getting those boxes because the Reliat alone is just worth your time. And if you're not lucky enough to get it in one of those, then hopefully you can grab it in a standard Black Market blueprint box or something there. So starting off then with the anti-ship type, the Type A Reliat, this is an absolute beast in the early game. If we look at its combat roles, you can see it gets an A-grade rating in anti-ship capability, a C-grade in anti-aircraft, and a C-grade again in siege. We can go into the description here, and we'll see that it is a middle row ship that is designed to go against small ships using torpedoes. Now, torpedoes, if you're not aware, tend to be very useful at dealing high amounts of smack damage in one go. They tend to have a high crit chance, which means when they hit, they have a chance to deal additional bonus damage on top. So what you see is the DPM stat is a little bit misleading. They do, however, tend to be a little bit slower torpedoes and easier to intercept if you're going up against a fleet that has lots of interception-capable ships, things like the Winged Hussar anti-air type that can shoot down incoming torpedoes, and indeed the Eris Destroyer as well can do it. Now, looking at the Reliat Rapid Torpedo anti-ship type, again, its firepower stats start at a very respectable 4,576. With enhancements both to the weapon blueprints and with enhancement points, I've pushed this up to an additional 18, 7, uh, 1820 to a total of 6396. Now, that may not sound much compared to some of the destroyers and things out there, um, but this is four command points. This ship is only four command points. You can have ten of these for 40 command points. And because they are available early on, because the blueprint is, the weapon blueprint is just standard missiles and torpedo blueprints, you can actually upgrade this really quickly and really easily. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the Reliant Rapid Torpedo Frigate, the anti-ship type, is an excellent early game option. Let's have a look at why. Let's jump into the anti-ship torpedo system here. This is the CT240A Roland Iron Dwarf K Cluster Torpedo. Now you'll see it's a damage type is projectile. Early on in the game that's not such a big problem because we're going up against ships that have very little in the way of armor in order to reduce that. Um, if you're wondering how armor works um, then Damfire did an absolutely amazing video on that. I've put a link to that in the description as well. Do check that out and we talked about how armor works and shield works etc basically it's just a flat damage reduction um, and because the early ships are things like frigates and destroyers that maybe have 5 to 50 armor and um, it reduces the damage by not all that much so you're still doing a good amount of damage with this now the prioritized target is annoyingly aircraft and um, it doesn't do particularly well against them but once aircraft are out of the skies this is exceptionally good against frigates and destroyers so if you're going up against stuff early on that doesn't have aircraft and you can just go straight through to that attack priority of destroyer and frigate 
Well, the Rapid Torpedo Frigate starts doing insane damage really early on. It does also have the crit bonus here, um, a chance to deal additional damage to the target. This is quite common on torpedo weaponry. Um, it basically means that once you hit, once the armor has been taken into consideration, your damage is then multiplied. There is a chance that your damage is multiplied further um, to get additional on there. So again, that 5,460 DPM that you see at the bottom is lying to you a little bit. Let's have a look at its enhancements though. Now, one of the best ones to go for, once you've got the points in, I wouldn't rush this one first, but when you have the points available, the dense cluster munitions strategy is an absolutely amazing little enhancement. It's 15 enhancement points, and it's pretty confusingly worded. It says, when the target is a frigate, it increases the number of bomblets by two and decreases the damage of single bomblets by 15% for cluster bombs. Now, basically, by increasing the damage by two, you're adding on an additional 200% of the damage and then reducing all of your bomblets by 15%. Hopefully you can see that the math there is very much in your favour. And because those bomblets work specifically well against frigates and destroyers, well, it just massively increases the damage when you're up against a frigate. Very, very good strategy there that is just going to allow you to deal insane damage to enemy frigates. We then have the warhead modification, because this is a torpedo that has the crit capability, absolutely you want to go for the flat damage increases before you go for the weapon system cooldown increases. And um, The idea here is that you're increasing the just straight up damage per strike, that means that you are going to exceed the armor by a greater amount, thus dealing more damage, and if you get a crit, well, you're getting a crit increase on a bigger number. Getting a 50% increase on 1,000 is all very well and good, but wouldn't you like to get a 50% increase on 1,500? A increase on a bigger number is a bigger number. So that's why we go for the all-missile torpedo damage. First of all, then we start looking at weapon system cooldowns. Now, torpedoes being the way they are, it is worth going for the guidance signal enhancement as well. An additional 10% hit rate is very nice to have, very useful there, just to make sure that your, tar your, your torpedoes and missiles do actually hit the targets. Torpedoes... As I said before, they're a little bit slow moving, they're easy to intercept, but that's not such a huge problem early on, um, especially against other small frigate and destroyer fleets. Very good against anyone who decides that they want to try and invade your territory, and pirates in the early game as well just fall like chaff to the scythe underneath this thing's firepower. Basically, in the early game, the Reliant Rapid Torpedo Frigate is buck for bang, probably the best ratio out there that four command points plus the insane amount of damage that this thing can output is just worth it like that you, you can look at other ships and go oh yeah but like the Zena Stinger is better and all this kind of thing yeah but the Zena Stinger is six command points 10 Zena Stingers costs you 60 command points this only costs 40 which means you can comfortably start building a full whack of 10 of these early on and add other ships in and around them as well. The Corellian Recon is an excellent thing to twin with these. Um, if you've watched my video on the Corellian Recon, you'll understand why. The second variant, the Reliat B, so to speak, is the torpedo type, or the Tactical Torpedo Frigate. This is absolutely one of my favourite ships now that I've unlocked this. I was actually talking to someone in the comment section the other day who suggested I do a video on the Reliat. I said, I'd love to see you do a video on the Reliat. And the problem I had was that I had the anti-ship and the stealth type, I didn't have the torpedo type at all. Um, literally about an hour after I responded and basically said that, I opened up a black market blueprint crate, got a blueprint, for the Reliant Tactical Torpedo Frigate and lucked out on the 100% right away. So apparently that was my Christmas gift. Um, so thank you very much for the luck on that one. Anyway, what makes the Reliant Tactical Torpedo Frigate different from the anti-ship type? Well, first of all, looking at the firepower stats, you might be a little bit confused here. The anti-ship fire starts as a lower 4,015, and even after upgrading it by an additional 1,927, it's still sitting at 5,942. That's lower than we had on the standard anti-ship type, isn't it? So what's going on there. We still only got an A rating though, but it's lower than we had before. Ultimately, this is because of what the Tactical Torpedo Frigate is firing. If we open up the description here, you'll see that it's still a middle row, it's still a torpedo ship, but it's now an energy weapon. This means that rather than going up against armor, which is just reduced by flat amounts, instead we go up against a target's shields. And shields 
often aren't present on ships. There are a lot of ships that just don't have shields at all, and a lot of players who in PvP scenarios are not pumping stats into increasing their ship's resistances. So, these torpedoes tend to just ignore all of your enemy ship's defenses and deal insane amounts of damage. So let's look at how this works. Let's have a look then at the C2248A Roland Iron Dwarf P this time around, the energy torpedo. We still have that crit chance here, of course, it's a torpedo system, but now the attack priority has very much changed down to, uh, to focus on carrier, battle cruiser, then cruiser. And the fact that we're now going using energy weapons against these ships means you're more likely to actually get that damage through. Because if you're going against their armor, those ships have a lot of armor and they just reduce the amount of damage that you're taking by insane amounts. They don't tend to have big shields. Ultimately, if you're going up against something like a Solar Whale or a Spear of Uranus, the Noma shipping group specifically tend to have very high armor, but not much in the way of shields at all. These do an insane amount of damage. This comes in the form of the enhancements then. So first of all, I've gone for the key targets enhancement. When the enemy fleet includes battle cruisers, it prioritizes attacks on these targets and increases damage by 25%. Now, as far as I'm aware, that increased damage of 25% stays even after the battle cruisers are destroyed. I can't confirm that, but anecdotal evidence plus what I've seen when I'm using these seems to suggest that that's the case. Very, very nice. 25% increase on DPM. Um, and prioritizing the battle cruisers first of all, which means again, if you're going up against any battle cruisers, you're going to be dealing insane amounts of damage to those, taking them off the grid nice and quickly. Now, because this is an energy weapon, it doesn't really matter whether we go for weapon system cooldown or all missile torpedo damage increase because it's being reduced by a percentile amount, not by flat amounts. Whereas on the physical stuff, you want to increase the alpha strike. Here, you can go for whatever makes you feel happiest. I tend to kind of mix and match and just take them up both in equal, but I do also go for that explosive ammo enhancement as early on as possible so that I have the chance there of dealing additional 40 percent crit damage that's mad think about how much damage you are capable of doing with this ship and then add on an additional 40 percent on top of that it's just mad it means that when you're going up against those fleets that have cruisers battle cruisers and carriers the tactical torpedo frigate is suddenly ignoring armor and doing just mad amounts of damage very good once you hit the mid game by the time you're sort of hitting that mid game point and going up against enemy fleets you'll find that a lot of enemies are using cruisers and above um, and especially the pirates the privateers those are now using cruisers battle cruisers and carriers a lot more than they're going to be using frigates and destroyers so swapping your enhancement points out of the anti-ship type into the torpedo type just it makes sense because now you're able to do a lot more damage against those bigger targets now you'll notice that this time around i've actually ignored my usual advice of making sure that you increase the hit rate that's because i've not found that i really need it that two percent hit rate per level there obviously that's a ten percent torpedo hit rate ten percent missile hit rate at full enhancement um you have to sacrifice one of these slots. If you're going to, I would probably lose either the Warhead modification or the loading mechanism upgrade um, in order to do so. One of those two, um, just to reduce the damage a little bit and go for the hit chance. But I'm not finding that my torpedoes are missing all that frequently. Because obviously, you're going up against big targets and interception well your hit rate doesn't matter against that if they're intercepting your torpedoes there's not much you can do the hit rate's not going to affect it so for me the hit rate just isn't overly important now it is worth pointing out that if we have a look at the rest of the ship here as well if we go into its armor system you've got some interesting things here like the chance of being hit by missiles biting torpedoes um so if you're finding that you're taking a lot of damage on your Reliats and you've got a little bit of uh, enhancement points left, you can put five points in there or however many it is in total to up your defenses against that and not get hit. Um, your armor, you've got your anti-fire propulsion here. I just don't really rate spending enhancement points in these if you, you know, if you have them spare i think there are better places to put them and that's basically into the next variation of the reliat there are times genuinely where i'm running fleets of two or three different variations of just reliat this is one that i really do pump the enhancement points into and um, to make sure i get the absolute best i just don't see here that increasing your anti-aircraft firepower really makes a difference at all um 
and the anti-aircraft support, the fact that you're taking all of those energy weapons away from what they should be firing at and trying to hit aircraft with them, it just seems a really bad idea to me. The third variant, the C-type for the Reliat, is the Stealth type, the Reliat Stealth Frigate, and this honestly is a hard choice between the torpedo and the stealth as to which one's actually my favorite and i think it's probably the stealth type because of the fun that i have with this ship now again if we look at the firepower stats you'll see that we've got an improvement on, on paper at least over the torpedo type and um, basic is up to 4251 i've enhanced it by 1462 um, it's not as high as some of the others can ultimately get, and again, it's going up against armor because it's projectile, not energy, so it's going to be reduced more frequently, but ultimately there's some really nice little tricks that this ship has up its sleeve, which it just doesn't really showcase in all of this kind of bit here. It's a middle row and it just says special type and all this kind of thing. Stealth torpedoes are pretty cool. So let's talk about the weapon system first of all, because the idea of a stealth torpedo I think is just pretty sweet anyway. So we have the CT-280T Roland Iron Dwarf K Special Cluster Torpedo. Again, our attack priority is Carrier, Battle Cruiser, and Cruiser, and you'll notice that this time around, we have the attack against primary weapon ability. This is something that I talked about at length in the Newland video, one of my favourite little fighters. Um, Attack against primary weapon does exactly what it says. It has a chance to deal additional damage to the target's primary weapon system. You remember all those times when you're looking at something like, uh, you know, the ion cannon on your ship and it's got an ability that increases its HP and you're like, why on earth would I ever want that? Well, stuff like this is why. Because what this little git does is targets your weapon systems and blows them up. So if you've got something like an IO or an Eternal Storm that is pretty much front-loaded into one weapon, and then a whole load of these Reliat Stealth Frigates come along, remember, 10 of these is only 40 command points, then you can disable that weapon. And what really is an Eternal Storm Battlecruiser without its Ion Cannon? What is a uh, Solar Whale without its Corvette Bay? Yeah, if your Reliats disable those, you basically turn your opponent's ship into a floating space brick. And if that's not the coolest little thing ever, I really don't know what is. If we have a look at its enhancements, this is where things just get better as well. The key target strategy again includes, uh, if the enemy fleet includes battlecruisers, prioritizes attacks on these and increases damage by 25%. I do go for this because again, as far as I'm aware, that increased damage of 25% isn't only when it's attacking the battlecruisers, it's just, oh look, the enemy fleet has battlecruisers, 25% increase. And even when, they, uh, when the enemy fleet's uh, been destroyed of all its battlecruisers, when there are no battlecruisers left, as far as as I'm aware, that 25% boost remains. And at the point of the server I'm in, every fleet has battle cruisers in it. So why would you not go for a 25% DPM increase and just make sure those battle cruisers die first? Again, watching an Eternal Storm lose its ion cannon is just hilarious. Again, because it's a crit-based system, we can go for the things like missile and torpedo damage. Again, projectile-based system, it's going up against armor, so you want flat alpha damage increase first of all. Then we go for the additional crit damage. Having a 50% and a 40% additional crit damage on there is just fun, especially when you hit a weapon system and you get that full additional 90% crit on it. Great fun there. And then a weapon system cooldown just to fire a little bit faster. If you believe, for example, that actually no, the battle cruiser thing doesn't work the way I'm saying it does, or if you want to change some of the other things out, you can also go for the reduce of uh, the chance of all torpedoes being intercepted by six percent. This one does have some use, especially if you're going up against fleets that really are um, intercepting your torpedoes. But ultimately, the Stealth Frigate has some other tricks up its sleeve. So let's come out and actually have a look at those in the Field Camouflage System. Basically, the Stealth Frigate loses its anti-aircraft fire support and instead gets this experimental Field Camouflage System, which increases the ship's evasion and reduces the chance of its torpedoes being intercepted by 30%. 35% increased evasion, 30% in, uh, reduction to the chance of its torpedoes being intercepted. That alone is really, really cool. Remember, that evasion means you take less damage when things are firing at you. So if anything decides it wants to shoot at the Reliat Stealth Frigate, it's got a 35% chance reduction, basically, um, of missing. 
unless it's got some very high hit rates or some things like the SC002 um, or other jamming aircraft that will turn off that evasion. Um, basically, this is just massive damage reduction. That means an already difficult to hit frigate becomes very difficult to hit. Not quite to the level of a Carillion, which is why I tend to run these in a fleet with some Carillion recons or Carillion stealths, uh, Carillion specials, sorry. Um, and if you're not sure what I'm talking about with the Carillion and Evasion tanking, I do have a video already out on the Carillion Recon. I'll link that above and in the description as well. Make sure you check that one out. And I'm doing a video very soon, probably later this week, on the Blueprint Breakdown on the Carillion in total now that I have all three variants unlocked. Um, and I've been experimenting with those a lot. Now, in addition to that basic 35% evasion and the reduction there, of interception that 30% already that's why I don't tend to go for the additional uh, enhancements on the actual torpedo launcher itself because you've already got a 30% reduction there I think the rest of it's overkill but if we come into the enhancements here on the field camouflage system we do have a navigational computer enhancement this is actually surprisingly useful that 7% increased cruising speed and warp speed works quite nicely for a tactic I'll talk about um, now which is basically that I tend to have a fleet of uh, 10 Reliat stealth frigates on their own maybe a couple of Carillions in their Car Carillion recons or Carillion specials just to help tank for them um, and I tend to launch these into enemy uh, minor fleets because when the retaliation arrives there is chance for me to actually hit retreat and pull away without having taken hardly any damage it also means that you can poke enemy big fleets um, and see what they've got um, and get an idea and feel for what that fleet is capable of doing and then pull away nice and safely. So being able to move around and get that additional warp speed and cruising speed to get there a little bit faster and pull away a little bit faster can be beneficial. I also like to slam these into the side of a, another fleet. So I will engage with a cruiser fleet that's got things like chimeras and that in there and then suddenly slam in 10 Reliat stealth frigates into the side and just punch in extra damage and start disabling weapon systems left, right and centre. Because I've not been doing the scouting part much, I've swapped this out and I've focused instead on the visual signal camouflage which reduces the chance of being hit by direct fire weapons which are cannons and lasers, anything that has to aim and actually fire like railguns that's direct fire weapons there. 15% reduction on, a, in, on top of the already 35% ship evasion. Then we have the guidance detection jamming, which does the same thing, but against missiles and torpedoes instead, reduces the chance of being hit by those. Again, that's on top of the already high 35% evasion. This makes the Reliat Stealth just this excellent little ship for flying around in a fleet on its own. Again, 10 of these is only 40 command points. That's the point I really need to get here. These are very cheap to build. All three variants are really cheap to build. So pump, do what I do, pump in your enhancement points into these. All three variants are absolutely worth it. And there are times when you want to run multiple of these. I don't tend to run the anti-ship types alongside the torpedoes and the stealth types because there's not much of a crossover there. The anti-ship type is brilliant in the early game at taking out destroyers and cruisers, uh, destroyers and frigates, sorry, whereas the torpedo and the stealth types really come into their own by sort of the mid to late game when you're mainly going up against cruisers, battle cruisers, and carriers. So I tend to have the torpedo and the stealth type both running side by side and in the early game I'll have all my points put into the anti-ship type which I'll then relocate once we sort of hit that mid-game point. Anyway folks, those are my thoughts and opinions on the three different Reliat Antonius Consortium frigate variants. I love all three of these, they all have their own unique uses. I can think they are just great fun. I love disabling weapon systems with the stealth types and just having these as little things that just harassment fleets basically. The torpedo type is just great fun. Hitting someone with a load of Reliats that are launching energy bombs. People just don't see it coming. People don't tend to put all that much in the way of energy. Um, for PvP though, again, that's not strictly true. A lot of people do tend to use things like the Taurus, um, which does obviously use lasers. So some people do build in energy resistance, at which point again, the stealth type just comes into its own there. You can kind of, if you have both of them, you've got all your bases covered. You're gonna do insane amounts of damage. And again, 40 command points for 10. You can have 20 Reliats, 10 torpedoes and 10 stealth types for 80 command points. And if that doesn't sound like an absolute bargain, well, I really don't know what to tell you. 
But let me know your thoughts and opinions. Perhaps you're using the Rally app and really enjoying these. Perhaps you think I've missed something on one of them, a really cool strategy or a target to go after or something that I'm not talking about in this video. Let me know that in the comment section down below. And if you enjoy this video, please hit like on it. It's a massive help to get a like on a video. It helps the YouTube algorithm recommend me more. It lets me know that you like the video enough for me to keep making this kind of content. And of course, if you do like this kind of content, go for that subscribe button as well. That's really awesome. And I love every single one of you who takes the time to hit that button and show the extra bit of support. Anyway, folks, there we have it, the Reliat Frigate, first Infinite Lagrange video of 2022. I hope this year has started well for you, and I hope it keeps going awesome right the way up till the end of December, and we can keep going on and just everything being awesome for everyone all the time. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this one right the way to the end. Thank you for your support. Happy sailing, and see you in Infinite Lagrange.